वेलकम टू वीटीयू ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम मै सेफ डाक्टर वीरेश तोटप मगल वर्किंग ऐस प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री तोंटदार्य कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग इन अवर प्रीवियस् वीडियो वी स्टडीड पॉलीमर्स एंड इंट्रोडक्शन टू पॉलीमर्स द सिंथिसि एंड अप्लीकेशन ऑफ पॉलीयुरेथेन् polymer composites introduction to polymer composites synthesis of polymer composites and their properties also we have studied along with their applications and uh, we have studied about the kevlar fiber also you have understood that polyurethanes are the versatile class of polymers having nhco in their uh, as their linkages from one monomer to another monomer and uh, polymer composites are those which are uh, you know made up of matrix and fiber fiber is reinforced in between matrix to produce polymer composites usually kevlar fiber is used as fiber and uh, aramides polyamides are used as matrix to produce polymer composites today we are going to make the study of conducting polymers we are going to study introductory part of that and we will be studying synthesis and the mechanism of conduction in polyaniline and various factors that are going to influence the conductivity of organic polymers and uh, later we will be studying what are biodegradable polymers introduction to biodegradable polymers and their requirements synthesis properties and applications of polylactic acid yes let us make a begin of uh, our study conducting polymers as soon as you listen to the word polymers okay they are insulating in their nature when you are seeing conducting you may be remembering uh, the thing that materials uh, they are going to be classified basically as conductors insulators and semiconductors and all metals are excellent conductors you know better and uh, when we are referring uh, okay conducting uh, word with the polymer okay really it is a fascinating one let us try to understand how okay the conducting polymers uh, are explored and uh, you know introduced to the world here <coughs> usually the organic polymers whatever we are going to have around us they are you know having insulating nature uh to have the conducting property within them intrinsically there should be an alternating single and double bonds all along the polymer backbone has to be existed then okay they will be uh, acquiring the property of uh, say conducting and uh, they are uh, you know if they are composed of aromatic rings like phenylene ring and uh, naphthalene anthracene pyrrole thiophene etc which are connected uh, each other through you know carbon to carbon single bonds okay so these can be converted very easily into polymer conducting polymers we in the beginning in the very first you know the polymer with uh, say significant uh, conductivity was synthesized okay was uh, it was the it is the name you know polyacetylene it is also referred as uh, polyethylene its you know electrical conductivity was uh, first time discovered by hideki sirakawa allen higer allen mcdermad 
and uh, they have received for their contribution for their exploration okay so nobel prize in the field of chemistry in the year 2000 alan mcdermid alan heger and shirakawa so uh, all together okay worked basically alan heger okay so he is the physics uh, person and alan mcdermid is the chemistry person and shirakawa okay he is also chemistry person so he was uh, from japan and both of these are from usa and uh, <clears throat> they synthesized this polyacetylene okay in the year 1974 itself when they prepared polyacetylene using you know monomer acetylene and uh, using the catalyst ziegler nata okay they have prepared in the beginning and uh, this was having very very poor conductivity and despite their effort you know in making uh, improvement in the uh, you know conductivity of the polymer they have taken so much of the pain later after 3 years okay so when the acetylene was polymerized and then it was oxidized with halogen vapor okay so they could able to improve the conductive conductivity of uh, polyacetylene film its conductivity you know was found to be significantly higher than any other you know conducting polymers reported previously so this discovery started the development of uh, many it, it has become a pioneer work in you know exploring uh, many more conducting polymers nearer to the you know uh, conductivity value of metals <clears throat> the conductivity of uh, the non doped conjugated polymers like uh, polyacetylene is due to the existing of conduction band similar to metal in them okay so in the metal okay usually hopping will be taking place from one uh, say uh, site to the other site here in the polyacetylene okay so we need to have the you know scope for the delocalization of electrons if the electrons are localized at a particular uh, site you know then it will not be acting as a conducting polymer and uh, here in a conjugated polymer three of the four valence electrons they do form strong sigma bonds okay through sp2 hybridization and uh, the electrons were strongly localized here the remaining unpaired electron uh, which were you know present in the pz orbital okay so they do overlap with uh, the neighboring pz orbital to form a pi bond and uh, the pi electrons are going to be you know conjugated uh, with the pz orbital overlap to form you know extended pz orbital throughout the polymer matrix okay so so that the electrons can move from uh, easily from uh, one point to the another point or one side to another side however non doped polymers have you know a low conductivity okay so because of a less number of electrons uh, you know to hop from one point to another point only when an electron is removed from the valence band then you know uh, it is possible to improve the conductivity so this can be achieved either by oxidation or you know by reduction if you add you know certain substance to the polymer you know matrix which can oxidize which can act as an oxidizing agent you know oxidizing agent oxidizes and itself undergoes reduction so due to this oxidation of uh, the polymer chain there will be the existing of uh, you know positive charges over it 
and therefore you know it is called as p doping and by the addition of uh, you know a certain substance like a reduction agent reducing agent reducing agent you know it helps other to undergo reduction itself always undergoes oxida uh, oxidation so here this uh, is going to create you know n doping uh, in the polymer matrix and thus contribute to the uh, you know improvement in the conductance of the polymer there are four uh, main methods of uh, you know doping or existing and uh, they are nothing but you know p doping redox p doping means uh, oxidation or reduction through that you know achieving p doping some of the pi bonds are oxidized by treating the polymer with uh, an oxidizing uh, oxidizing agent leads to the you know uh, formation of uh, you know uh, leads to the p doping and uh, usually the iodine and chlorine and arsenic pentafluoride are used as an oxidizing uh, agents and redox n doping okay here some of the pi bonds are reduced by treating the entire polymer with uh, a reducing agent okay so here uh, reducing agents some of them are used are uh, lithium and uh, sodium naphthalene you know that you know lithium you know undergoes rapidly oxidation okay it releases uh, as many number of electrons so in that way it uh, make the pi bond to acquire electrons and hence you know the pi bonds are undergoing reduction and uh, thus you know it is uh, uh, one of the methods of n doping okay so here electrochemical p and n doping this type of uh, doping is achieved by you know cathodic reduction and anodic oxidation simultaneously and photo induced doping photo induced doping means you know uh, electromagnetic radiations when they are going to illuminate over the surface of uh, the polymers okay they do uh, electromagnetic magnetic radiation carry certain uh, energy to ener uh, energy packets and then you know they are going to be transferred to the polymer matrix by gaining the energy electrons will be able to jump into the conduction band and thus you know the doping can be done very easily okay with the help of the photo induction and uh, now after having all this background let us try to understand the definition of uh, conducting polymers conducting polymer is an organic polymer which is having a highly delocalized delocalized means uh, say uh, possible to move from one part to the another part or from one side to another side okay electron system having electrical conductance of the order of uh, a conductor conductor means usually of the order of a near to the metallic uh, conductivity okay order of a conductor is called a conducting polymer okay so synthesis and mechanism of conduction in polyaniline we shall uh, you know understand right now okay so first these uh, you know uh, some points uh, are needed to understand okay so for uh, the understanding of the mechanism in the polyaniline okay so any of the organic polymer can be converted into a conducting polymer provided okay it has to has a linear structure and uh, it has to has the extensive conjugation in the polymeric backbone conjugation means uh, you know repeated uh, single and double bond in the polymer backbone itself is called as conjugation okay so double bond means it's a pi uh, backbone <clears throat> and then this uh, you know alternative uh, conjugated polymers you know they are uh, uh, um, you know synthesis and uh, later doping can be done for the polymer having pi back 
and uh, this doping as we understood can be done by either oxidative doping by introducing any oxidizing uh, agent or reductive doping by introducing uh, say reducing agents like lithium etc and uh, protonic acid doping okay so either of these okay we can make the formation of the polymer uh, conducting polymer and now look at a uh, synthesis of uh, polyaniline 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 nowadays is a popular conducting polymer for basically its uh, ease of preparation and its uh, good electrical conductivity and uh, its uh, stability in a variety of uh, environmental conditions polyaniline was first described in the mid of the 19th century by henry lethebe and who was you know who investigated this electrochemical and chemical oxidation products of aniline in the acidic media he noted that reduced form of a, say a polyaniline was a colorless but the oxidized form were having the deep blue color okay so <clears throat> polyaniline exists in several different oxidation uh, states of which emeraldine salt possesses excellent conductivity property and each of these forms different forms reversibly interconverted through electron transfer thereby enabling the switching from conductive to non conductive properties emeraldine salt is made by proteonic doping of a uh, imine nitrogen atom by treating with uh, acid like hydrochloric acid so let us try to understand uh, in future with the scheme okay oxidation here takes place uh, and positive charges are going to be created on the imine nitrogen atom in the polymer backbone which can move along the chain and are responsible for electrical conduction emeraldine salt is known as a synthetic metal synthetic metal why it is called so because metals are excellent conductors okay poly polymer which can conduct electricity as that of the metal is usually referred as synthetic metal you know uh, metal exists in the nature it cannot be synthesized at the most it can be extracted from the ore whereas this poly polymers they are going to be synthesized therefore this is called as synthetic metal it has got a you know excellent conductivity of about 10 to the power of 3 simon per centimeter okay so <clears throat> here i am just showing you the schematic way of presenting you know the synthesis of polyaniline i thank dr manjuna chennegowda of rvc i am using his slide for explaining this so we needed to take uh, two beakers having you know 250 ml uh, capacity in each we needed to take 50 ml of uh, point one molar hcl okay so here in this as well as in this and afterwards add point 5 gram of uh, you know ammonium persulfate which is an oxidant and uh, then stir it and here in this another beaker take uh, you know aniline aniline as a monomer okay approx uh, say so you, you need to take around 2 ml dissolve in acid stir it very properly and now you transfer all the ammonium persulfate dissolved in the 50 ml of 1.1 molar hcl to aniline slowly with a high stirring rate and with a, at a low temperature say around 0 degree centigrade as uh, this reaction is of a highly exothermic in nature one has to need one has to you know maintain you know the temperature around 0 degree centigrade 
slowly when you carry out around you know 3 to 4 hours then there will be the formation of uh, polyaniline ok. So, with green powder, green coloration ok. So, this uh, once is going to be formed ok, it has to be you know washed by using a 1 molar HCl repeatedly and afterwards we needed to use double distilled water to wash all the product formed till the washing ok, the washed water do not possess uh, any of the color ok. So, then finally, the residue remain residue is washed with the acetone or methanol to remove you know excessive HCl retained possibly and uh, the entire product was slowly you know heated to 60 degree centigrade and uh, thus you are going to arrive at uh, the polyaniline ok uh, in the powdery form. Now, <coughs> this is a reaction scheme ok. So, this aniline has got lone power of electrons here at the nitrogen ok, amine yeah, and here you know HCl uh, is uh, you know here chlorine, uh, chlorine it is highly electronegative ok. So, therefore, this H plus induced here ok uh, is uh, going to be interacting attacking here the nitrosan and uh, there will be the formation of uh, anilinium chloride and uh, it is uh, stirred continuously around uh, 0 degree centigrade only and ammonium perf sulphate is uh, added as an accident and then there will be the formation of a polyanilene and uh, this polyanilene formed it is uh, the entire polymeric chain is containing uh, you know two type of uh, backbone in it and one is uh, this part ok. So, this part is a uh, quininoid and uh, here double bond are existing with the nitrosan and another one is benzenoid ok. So, you do not have double bond associated with the nitrosan here ok. So, some of the uh, say uh, quininoid and some of the benzenoid they are associated in the polymeric chain and uh, this is how you are going to obtain polyaniline. Now, <coughs> these are different uh, forms of the polyaniline, there, there can be four different forms of the polyaniline and uh, first one when you consider x is equal to 0 in the poly, polyaniline backbone. So, x is equal to 0 means uh, if quininoid uh, does not exist in the polymer chain completely entire benzenoid form only will be existing. So, this one this is completely reduced one and it contains only NH group here. So, this is NH, so repeatedly they are there and uh, this entire you know polymer is you know uh, colorless and uh, it is uh, possessing insulating property and this is referred as uh, leucoemeraldine. Leucoemeraldine do not contain quininoid structure in it and uh, it possess colorless color and uh, you know this is insulator. And another possibility you know when uh, x is equal to 1, x is equal to 1 means uh, you know you consider here completely ok in the entire uh, you know poly, uh, polyaniline structure there is no benzenoid simply the quininoid is existing throughout the entire polymeric chain. Then you know you are going to observe ok quininoid form of uh, say chain and all this you know existing completely oxidized one it contains only nitrogen group and this is referred as pernigranine, pernigra aniline and uh, this possess purple color and once again this per, uh, pernigra aniline is a you know insulating insulator it is not at all a conductor. And now we just you know assume another condition where 
x is equal to 0 0.5 means so uh, in the entire polymeric chain okay so benzenoid exists uh, in the 0 0.5 part means half of this is quinoid and another one is benzenoid and uh, this is a base form okay so containing nh uh, here as well as uh, say nitrogen benzenoid and quininoid both are existing all along the polymeric chain this is partially oxidized and it is not neutralized and contains both nh as well as uh, say nitrogen group along the polymer chain okay this is a base form when base is treated with acid like hcl okay neutralization will be taking place so here on addition to this polymer emeraldine base you know hcl when it is added then you know here uh, you are going to see the formation of emeraldine salt by the treatment with uh, acid and uh, this emeraldine salt is partially oxidized neutralized and contains both nh and n group in it okay so that here the positive charge counter uh, say compensated by negative anion here okay so creates uh, the path for the hopping of the electron from one side to another side and thus you know this uh, emeraldine salt possess the conductance conductivity property and uh, it looks uh, you know green in its appearance so thus we are coming to the conclusion that you know polyaniline in the emeraldine salt form only acts as the conducting polymer now <coughs> after having uh, understood uh, all about this uh, okay we are going to just have the look at uh, the preparation of polyaniline in the conductive form polyaniline is partially oxidized first using the ammonium peroxy sulfate disulfate which is an oxidizing agent then into a you know you will be getting a base form of the aniline okay emeraldine base which contains alternating reduced and uh, oxidized forms of aniline polymer in the backbone and thereafter we needed to treat uh, with uh, aqueous uh, hydroxy uh, hcl and uh, the protonation will be taking place uh, and uh, h plus attacks the imine nitrogen creating counter current carrying charged sites like a positive charges and uh, you know negative charges in the polymer backbone the uh, negative charges are you know arising there in the you know in the form of the anions counter uh, chloride ions okay so uh, giving the polyaniline the property called as conductivity property so <coughs> this uh, in the schematic form i have shown once again here okay the polyaniline peroxy ammonium peroxy disulfate is treated with this and then you know this base form of the polyaniline is obtained and it is protonated and uh, thus you know you are going to observe the proteanic acid uh, doping of polyaniline to form the conducting polyaniline okay so thus uh, this polyaniline okay is uh, made to acquire conductivity by this way and uh, let us try to understand the various factors that govern the conductivity of an organic conducting polymer okay here basically four factors are there conjugation length of the polymer chain and uh, doping level temperature and then frequency of current okay so one by one let us try to understand each so the conductivity of the organic uh, polymers is influenced uh, mainly by the chain length conjugation chain length in the polymer backbone okay if the extended uh, chain length is there with the conjugation the 
conductivity increases okay so this uh, one of the this is one of the for you know influencing factor and then doping level okay so generally with the increase in the dopant okay the conductivity also increases but it do not continuously occurs to a certain extent only we will observe the effect of uh, you know uh, the dopant addition of the dopant okay which influences the increase in the conductivity after certain addition we will observe no increase in the say conductivity okay so but uh, definitely we can say to little extent the doping level influences you know in the increment of uh, conductivity of the polymer backbone and uh, coming to temperature you know uh, temperature you know uh, it has got a, a, a very influential uh, aspect over here and uh, in the metal okay increase in the conductivity to a certain extent increases the conductance also at low temperature conductance decreases okay so here at low temperature polymer found to be you know possessing uh, the increased conductivity as the temperature increases uh, you know the conductivity becomes uh, constant okay so here the frequency of current frequency of current is having uh, you know a very significant influence the conductivity of the polymeric material mainly depend upon the frequency of current because uh, the transport mechanism mechanism okay so of this uh, polymeric conductivity material is depending upon the hopping from you know jumping from one side to the another side for this you know the frequency of current uh, okay when it increases uh, then the conductivity also increases so by this uh, okay so we have understood the conducting polymers okay so what are those means uh, the organic polymers having a conjugation in their polymeric chain with the delocalized uh, you know elect uh, for the delocalization purpose you know uh, there should be pi electron that will be acting as uh, the conducting polymer okay so this is once again you can see here an organic polymer with highly delocalized pi electron system having electrical conductance of the order of the conductor or the metal is called as a conducting polymer okay so now after having understanding all this uh, we will try to understand uh, you know what are biodegradable polymers we needed to understand much more about this biodegradable polymers as nowadays we are extensively using synthetic polymers why we are using synthetic polymers they are possessing wide variety of uh, properties mainly because of their uh, why you know vivid existence in the in the form of vivid existence say they are available in the form of glass they are available in the form of the you know uh, uh, they are uh, available in the form of the papers and uh, say cardboards okay wherever or you, uh, right from the carry bag you know you are going to have uh, wide uh, uh, applications of uh, this synthetic polymers having good mechanical strength also so this made us to have the dependency uh, on these synthetic polymers and uh, therefore with the help of these synthetic polymers nowadays we are enjoying uh, too much you know quality and uh, comfort in our life in the modern society but <clears throat> the only problem and the greater problem associated with these uh, synthetic polymers are they cannot be you know degraded themselves will not be undergoing any degradation so here <coughs> once we use it we will be disposing them 
that disposal polymer okay cannot be you know that will not undergo itself degradation and uh, if you burn it okay you will be getting carbon dioxide freely okay to the environment you know carbon dioxide is a global uh, gas uh, global warming gas therefore it contribute uh, increase in the say temperature around us and uh, also the inhaling of uh, this carbon dioxide creates much of the you know breathing problem for the human being and uh, thus you know it is a uh, high time for us to look into another class of polymers which are possessing the properties on par with these synthetic polymers as well as you know they have to undergo degradation both of these uh, you know properties if we are able to get it within a polymer then we will not be we will be solving many of the problems around us okay so therefore biodegradable polymers are uh, having uh, much uh, say importance in our life so now now we will try to understand about uh, something about biodegradable or uh, biopolymers all biopolymers are having their origin in the nature okay so from agricultural base uh, okay we can produce much of the say uh, biopolymers starch is one of the examples cellulose is one of the examples cotton is a cellulose okay likewise okay so these these will be you know undergoing uh, uh, degradation with the help of the enzymes okay which are living organisms or by chemical uh, way that is hydrolysis etc a degradation degradable material in which degradation occurs okay can be converted into uh, water and carbon dioxide and uh, sometimes uh, in the presence of uh, lesser oxygen when oxidation occurs or degradation occurs there may be the formation of the methane but mainly the product formed are water as well as carbon dioxide <coughs> now some of the following information okay would like to understand to have better understanding of biodegradable polymers okay naturally occurring polymers are all biodegradable okay this is first thing then if any you know atom other than carbon and hydrogen is there in the polymer backbone it will also undergo degradation okay so with the help of the functional groups attached to polymer and then the synthetic uh, condensation polymers okay generally you know uh, when they are uh, possessing biodegradable property the extent of uh, degradation is depending upon my i mean the faster or rate of degradation is in the order of ester ether amide urethane etc what i mean to say is okay so ester undergoes slowly biodegradation compared to ether both of these undergo slow degradation compared to amide and all these undergo i mean ester ether and amide undergo slow degradation compared to urethanes okay so hydrophilic polymers degrade faster than hydrophobic what is the meaning of this hydrophilic and hydrophobic polymer okay hydrophilic means water loving hydrophobic means water hating yes polyvinyl alcohol pva in short it is called as it is hydrophilic in its nature whereas you know uh if you take polysulfone that is hydrophobic polymer okay that won't uh, swell if you keep in the water because it won't be sorbing or it won't be interacting with water therefore that is hydrophobic and uh, hydrophilic is the water loving okay so water loving polymer they do undergo easy 
degradation compared to heterophobic polymers. And uh, if a polymer is water soluble, that does not mean necessarily that you know it is uh, biodegradable only. Sometimes you know biodegradation of this polymer will be occurring with the help of the hydrolysis and uh, uh, with the help of the oxidation process. The presence of uh, hydrolyzable or oxidable, oxidizable linkages in the polymer main chain, I mean the presence of suitable substituents or moieties okay, or stereo configuration L form, S form, D form, etcetera, balance of hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity contribute to the biodegradability of the polymers. So, I would like to explain you. Okay. So, uh, if you take the you know uh, line balance of hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity contribute to biodegradability. So, you are uh, you know uh, most of you are using tissue papers in the hotels. Say as soon as you have the meals they will be giving you tissue paper. Sometimes uh, you know if your hands are uh, uh, you know more wetty if uh, as soon as you just uh, touch that uh, paper into your hand uh, containing water in it uh, okay so they do absorb all the water fastly and uh, they do undergo disintegration sometimes you know if you use other than uh, say tissue papers you, even if you rub uh, your hand over to the paper paper slowly absorb water and it won't be undergoing uh, you know disintegration as that of the tissue paper tissue paper disintegrate very faster means uh, it is a very hydrophilic in its nature it absorbs water it will be you know undergoing disintegration it possesses very very little mechanical strength compared to the other polymers which are having hydrophobic in their nature so hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity both are excellently managed or engineered in such a way that uh, sometimes uh, like tissue paper that has to sorb water and it has to retain its mechanical strength means uh, both are finely you know adjusted by adjusting the functional groups uh, responsible for hydrophilic in the nature okay so <coughs> biodegradable polymers can be you know divided into three classes and uh, first one is uh, natural polymers which are having origination from the plant and uh, animals for example cellulose and starch okay these are uh, as well as proteins are having their origination in the natural in, in the plant whereas uh, collagen is uh, you know having the origination in the animal and all these are natural polymers biosynthetic polymers okay produced by fermentation process by microorganisms example polyhydroxyalkanoates okay so these are biosynthetic polymers and uh, thirdly certain synthetic polymers possessing the biodegradable properties okay so like polycaprolactone and polylactic acid these are synthetic uh, you know uh, bio polymers they are having their resource in the uh, you know uh, biological resource only and uh, they are degradable but they can be synthesized okay so for that excellent example is polylactic acid so which uh, you know in detail about the polylactic acid its origin and its properties how we can synthesis uh, polylactic acid and uh, what are the applications of the polylactic acid we are going to study all these uh, in our uh, next class okay thank you